<laughs> Tell me about Michael Hurley. Michael Hurley was the school bully. Oh. And, I mean, he was like the classic. It's almost as if you put him in a film, you'd say that's too over the top. You know, he was just the classic beat everybody up, you know, meanie, meanie, meanie. Of course, his big target was me. So one day we were practicing for the school play, and I was, I was the dog. I was the dog, and um, I'm on all fours, you know, on the black uh, concrete. Right, you're, right, you're kids, you're, right. you're woof woof, yeah. you're harsh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> and um, so I just, I see from the corner of my eye him, you know, and I'm always, I got eyes in the back of my head because of this person, and I see him look at me, spot me, and start to take a running start. And I went, oh, God, oh, God, please, Michael, please, Michael. And he just took this huge leap from about 10 feet away and just leapt right on my back. And my arms gave in and my chin went right into the blacktop and it was completely, like, severed. Oh, yikes. And I was rushed in an ambulance to the hospital. I had to get, like, 20 stitches. And uh, I have a little scar under here. Yeah, it's I'm actually just... quite little. <laughs> I know. Everybody has a scar on their chin, though. It's really weird. And uh, my mom, you know, came back to Forgive school. Forgive me for looking, but I just... Oh, no, please do. And uh, he, when we walked... <laughs> when we walked... <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it is? My birthday? No, it's a joke. It's a joke. Just a joke. So anyway, you get to the hospital and you get stitched yes. up. Yes. And, um, and when we walked back into the school, um, you know, my mother was coming to talk to the principal or something, I don't know, and he was laughing. He was laughing at me. And so my mom just sort of grabbed um, him by the shirt collar, and I can't say what she said on the air. We got away with the balls. I don't know if we're going to get away with this one. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, in a nutshell, she said, if you ever beep with my kid again, I'll beeping rip your beeping neck off. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> you knew mom loved you, didn't you? Yes. You know what, man? I'll tell you, every kid wants their parent to do that for them, even if it's once or a million times in this world. I will never, ever forget that my mother did that for me. I have so much respect, and I think I'd be the same way with my kids. You know, don't hurt the other kids, but stick up for your kid, you know? You almost sound, when you talk about your, your, your pal who may join us, and talking about your mom. And you're he is not... my pal. He's my best friend. I understand that, but, but will he be your husband someday, do you think? <laughs> you know, it's funny that you mentioned that, actually, because, um, <laughs> no. I mean, yes, maybe. I don't know. It's like... What, what is this? Rent a fantasy we're having here today? <laughs> I, no, I mean, I don't know how to explain this. I mean, Eric and I, when we talk about it, it seems very clear. Um, we, we just, we're just happy being together, mm -hmm. you know? I don't think we wouldn't marry each other, and it's not to say that someday we won't. No, but I find it interesting that you talk about what kind of a mom you'd be when you talk about your mom. Yeah. I, I just think that's neat. Well, there are definitely elements about her that I will definitely take from my child, and there are elements that I won't, that I've learned from, you know? And that's what it's really all about, is trying to, you know, take the good and break the patterns, you know? But you can't. I watch my daughter with her daughter, and I've heard my daughter say, I'll never do what my mom did yeah. if I'm a mom. And son of a gun if she every now and again doesn't do the exact same yes. thing and you know you will too well we can't help it we are a product of our environment no matter how hard we try and rebel against it it's just the way it is now i i read that you, you had a quote and i don't i don't want the full quote on this that, <laughs> right. if, that you'd really be surprised let's put it that way okay if you ever read an article about yourself that didn't dwell on your past Let's Absolutely. just leave it be. Are you, you kidding me? I'd have a coronary on the floor. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll accept <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. I really would. And it's like I said earlier, you know, Eric... But does it bother you a lot that every article, I mean... Uh, yeah, in fact, it does. Even, even I've tonight talked about your mom, but I've, uh, you notice I've stayed away from all the stuff Thank you wrote about, about in your book it. because... You, you spilled it, kid. You know, we know it. Exactly. And, and that was great for me and, you know, whatever. It, and it by the way, you're past it. Yeah, it's a past. And you know what? I'd like, I'd, it'd be really interesting to see what, you know, for someone to look at me and go, oh, I'm interested in what she's doing now or what she wants in the future, you know, not like what she did, you know. But Eric summed it up in the most, you know, nicest way I've heard in a long time, which was, you know, things that you do in life just add to your paragraph. And yeah. you're doomed with a paragraph, yeah. you know. But it's nice to know in your case that your past, what you wrote about in the book, I, right. people that forever dwell on. Uh, Dad was an alcoholic. Yeah. Uh, mother beat me up and can't get past it. No, my mother I, never beat me. Actually. No, I'm not. I'm not. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not even talking about you. I'm talking about okay. other people. Dad was an alcoholic. Yeah. Uh, Dad made fun of me because I was fat. Right. Uh, you know, mom beat me up. Whatever. And that they 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 build their whole careers 
on, 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 on writing odes to their childhood pain. For mm -hmm. God's sake, get on with your life, people. That's what I have, the, you know, the same thing to say about everybody who's interested in my past and dwelling on their own. Get over it. I know, but the one thing <laughs> I want to ask you about, and then if Eric comes out here, well, that'll be the surprise. But I want to, you have really been on a roll since Dave's birthday. You know, in, ter in terms of publicity and how people love you and react to you on the streets and everything. You're really on a roll. A, a great roll. We'll continue with Drew uh, for a couple right after these messages and then Calvin Trilling uh, from the New Yorker magazine. We'll be right back. Drew's peeking out the door at Eric and Eric's not coming in. Yeah, he's too shy. That's okay. That's all right. That's so sweet. He just waved to me. He looks so handsome tonight. He's wearing a suit. Going to the Batman premiere. Is, is tonight the night? Mm-hmm. Tonight's the night. Now, your part in this is not enormous. This is kind no, of... No, I'm a Coco star. Yeah. <laughs> I like that wording for it. Uh, have you seen the picture, or are you going to see it the first no, time? No, I don't think anybody has. I mean, they really just finished editing it, but this is definitely the escapism for the summer, by uh, far. I, I mean, for years and years and years to come. I mean, this is... What Joel Schumacher did with this film is... Kudos to him. It's, it's no excellent. No kidding. No kidding. Yeah. You see, I was let down by Batman 2. Because I was so high on Nicholson in the first yeah. one that when DeVito did The Penguin, to me it was a letdown. Not that, that Danny DeVito's not a great actor, he's a fine actor, and God forbid anything would ever happen to him personally in his life. But I like <laughs> I like Nicholson as the Joker, yeah. and so the, the next one was... And who's the character in this one, the comic character? Well, there's the Riddler, oh, Jim okay. Carrey, yep. and there's Tommy Two-Face, which is Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> and that's sort of, um, I'm Sugar. Sugar, right. yeah, yeah. who is sort of a tribute to Marilyn Monroe. She's very glitter-dipped and decadent, and uh, she's um, sort of Tommy's girl, along with Spice, because he's sort of two people, and Spice is his darker side. And uh, But then and then uh, Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee sort of joined forces as the big bad guys. Don't give away the surprise ending. Oh, I won't. Good. I absolutely I'm will sure not. You, you will cannot not. have it. <laughs> um, after Dave. Yeah. You've really been on a roll. I mean, I hear people wave to you on the street, and they give you a thumbs up yeah. and everything, and uh, and that's that's neat. It's great. I love that. I love, you know, being open and susceptible to, to just interactions with people on a daily basis. It's it's wonderful, you know. Where when does the when does the wall come down though? When when does when does uh, I don't have a wall up. I I know you don't. Oh, okay. most, most times. Do I, when but do you ever, is, is there ever a time when you say, okay, that's enough pictures, that's enough talk, that's enough of me being the public person, I'm going to be my private self now? Yeah, I think, I don't think that you're, um, I think it gets to a point where you have to accept that you're not really entitled to do that in public because you are a public person and your job actually becomes a 24-hour-a-day thing. And once you willingly accept that, then it's actually quite okay. And if you like being able to interact with people, you know, then it's a gift. And if you're not acting like that, you're being rude to people. And I don't believe in that method of acting. Right. And, and tonight when you go to the premiere, people will take a lot of pictures of you. Yeah. And a lot of people will wave at you, want to shake your hand, whatever. And that's fine. Yeah. But then do you look forward to when that's over and now Eric and I can go home and oh, we don't yeah. have to have the pictures and the, and the, and the hoo-ha-ha. Ha yeah. The I think that's what makes me also um, as as accepting as I am is because I, I am not constantly in the limelight. When people come up to me, it's in the, in the day on the street when I'm walking up and down, going to eat, doing my errands, you know. Um, that's when I run into people. It's not because I'm at Hollywood schmoozing sh shindigs all day long, gotcha, you know. In fact, gotcha, gotcha. I can't stand that stuff. Last question. When was the last time you saw E.T.? Uh, about, mm, I don't know, 10 years ago? What Isn't it a trip when you start saying things like, oh, I haven't seen you in eight years, or that's been 10 years? Yeah, but I wonder what you'd think now if you saw it like now, if you rented it and took it home and looked at it. You know, they watched it on the tour bus, actually, and Eric couldn't watch it. <laughs> I thought I got a real kick out of that. You um, know, Eric's fantasy might well be sitting at home alone some night when you're out working watching E.T. I don't video. think so. Uh, okay. I think it would really freak him out. <laughs> anyway, have a great summer. Thanks for your Thank kindness you. to us here. Thank you. Have a good time. And I, I shall indeed. Okay. And I hope that you'll come and visit us whenever you feel, okay? We think the world of you here. I would love to. Thank you. I love coming here. Okay. Thank you. Drew Barrymore, folks, in uh, Batman Returns? Yes. Forever. Said, yeah, Batman Forever. <laughs> Almost got it right. And big stays in. Now, these messages.